Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how are you doing? I'm just moving a few of these bales out of the way because I am hoping that we will be able to store our new bales in here. And I didn't actually mean to pick that one up quite like that. Um, all of these bales of hay that we've done, I'm hoping that we'll be able to drop them in this shed at the back uh, using our Ursus bale collector that we're going to be using today. And I've baled all the rest of the bales, they're all ready. Um, so all we've got now is to go and get them and first of all we'll get the ones near here and we'll put them into this shed and I'm hoping that the ones that are over near the sheep pens we'll be able to go over there and get those with um, oh, and store those over there near the um, where the sheep pens are and that brings me on to my second point at the moment as the seasons mod stands um, in its current iteration um, we do have a slight problem we did originally intend to get pigs and we were going to be getting the pig sort of uh, next year however with seasons the way it is at the moment um, unfortunately pigs don't make any money in fact you can only you pigs only run at a loss you cannot make money with pigs and that is a bit of a problem because we were planning to get several pigs there and sort of feed them with our grains um, if you just count the cost of the animal care and um, uh, buying and selling the animals, then you just about turn a profit. But if you take into account the cost of the feed that you put into them, either feed that you buy or grains that you give them, you end up making a massive loss. So we're not going to do those, um, at least until Seasons has a fix for the pigs. Um, in the meantime, we'll do sheep instead. So if we've got a load of hay over by the sheep, that's actually going to work out quite nicely. Now, I was torn today between using the Zeta. We did a little bit with the Zeta yesterday, uh, last week rather, um, and the International. The um, the Deutz we used to do the, um, the bailing, didn't we? So I'm hoping that this little Zeta will be able to cope with um, towing the... Uh, the Ursus bell collector that we're going to use. Um, I think that we are going to have to use a weight. We're going to use a, a weight on the front. So we'll use this one that we've got here. So if I just unhitch that one a second, um, then we can spin round. And we'll nip over to the dealership and we'll pick that one up. My question I asked you all last week, as you many of you know, now know, our little tiny vitamin wheel loader that we were using on the farm got stolen. Um, and... Yeah, well, basically, the uh, I updated the mod, and it didn't work so well, and removed it from the map. So rather than just cheat the next one in, our vitamin got stolen. And because it got stolen, um, but the gates on the farm were open, I mean, you look, see, the gates there, they're open. The barns being open made no never mind, and the fact that you can drive up and down the bank here and get round the back of the farm, apparently that didn't matter either. Nope, the gates were open, and so the insurance company are refusing to pay out. That's not very good for us. However, the dealership have said that they do have another vitamin available, um, so we could go and buy another one if we wanted to. Um, and that's what I asked you all. Did, did you want me to replace the vitamin with another one, or um, should we just say that we're not going to use it anymore? So I had 1,000... 843 people answer that question huge number of people and of those 1843 361 of you said no don't replace it and 1482 of you felt that there was a place on the farm for another vitamin so we will be replacing that one i'm not going to do it today because there's a few other things that i want to do today um not least of which i need to get the um we need to get the Ursus so and we need to start gathering these bales in. But what I'd also like to do is um, we need to get the cows topped up with grass because the cows have hardly got any grass at all now. If I go through here, we have 29 litres. So we don't have any grass for the cows. Um, power food, we're pretty low, but we've got hay coming in, so that'll be sorted. We don't have a lot of straw. We've only got four bales of straw left, but I'm hoping we've got enough to last us until the end of summer. I mean, we're in summer now anyway. We've just got to wait till the end of summer before we get more straw. We can always buy a little bit more here from the shop. I had a bit of lag then. That wasn't very good. Um, so all in all, the cows are doing okay, and they're providing us with plenty of milk. We'll try to get some more cows if we can. Um, now is the best time of year to buy cows. 
and so I'm thinking that we might just sort of splash out on a few. We don't have a lot of money available at the moment. We are we are running a bit short on funds. So let's go into bailing technology here, and we want that Ursus there. We're going to lease you for three thousand four hundred euros. And while we're here, my question for the week, I cannot buy and show these tractors. Um, I know that we've been talking a lot about tractors, and I've been buying up an awful lot of tractors lately, but I don't have anything that's particularly powerful, and we may be glad of just a tractor to do some grunt work around the place. And we've got um, that Deutz there, which is 143 horsepower, which is... Uh, that's a fair bit of grunt work, that is, really. Um, but no, I was thinking that we would go... Um, we'll move it up a, gr up a gear... So we've got the Fent Vario here. It's 165 horsepower, though it is capable of going all the way up to 240. I wouldn't. Um, I was actually thinking around the 200 horsepower mark if we were to do an upgrade on the engine. So, so we got the Fent 700 Vario. Then um, we've got the Fast Track. Now it's 195. The engine boost that goes up to 230. So you got one or the other. So again, it's around 200 horsepower. But of course, the Fast Track is capable of 70 kilometers an hour, which is around about 40 miles an hour. It is a very fast tractor. It's called a Fast Track for a reason. So is that one or that one? And then I had a few other people. So I've had people asking for those tractors, which is why I'm putting them both in. A lot of people have been wanting me to see a Fast Track in the series. Um, or any series, um, so I'm putting it in. Fent is always popular. Um, and we are in Poland, so I'm throwing in an option here for, if I can just find it, it's in my mods collection. I do definitely have it here because I was looking at it um, earlier on, and when I was finishing off all the bailing. Come on, where are you? Ursus, there we go. That Ursus there is a 148 horsepower. It goes up to 180, so it's not quite as high as the others, but in nevertheless, 180 horsepower is some substantial grunt work. So yeah, we've got the Ursus tractor right there. That is the Ursus 15014. Well, it'd actually be the 18014A. Um, but yes, yeah, so we've got an Ursus. Or finally, the other one that I was going to offer up was an old classic. The classic Ford TW25. It's not actually the TW25. It's going to be the TW35, which is 187 horsepower. So again, close enough to 200 that they're all around about the same. So we got four tractors that are all about the same horsepower. We got an old classic Ford, and those I happen to know they're pretty good. Those are ones that I've actually driven in the past. I've done quite a lot of work in one of those. Beast of a machine they are. Um, absolutely wonderful. And then you've got the um, the Polish option. And I've gone too far, haven't I? There it is. Um, Ursus. We've got an Ursus tractor there. That is going to be 180 odd horsepower. And there's a brand shiny new tractor. It looks very good. Um, it's a compact tractor as well, so it would suit the small fields quite nicely. Um, then we've got the fast track option. Not the big fast track. We've got the small fast track option there. And this is designed for fast travel on the roads, but it's also got some serious horses under the bonnet, so it's capable of doing quite a bit. And finally, we've got the Fent 700 Vario, which would be around 200 horsepower. Again, another compact tractor, and the Fent is highly thought of in the agricultural world. So you've got four magnificent choices there to choose from. It's your vote. Is your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. Now then, we want to get this Ursus um, bale trailer underway. I was actually thinking of leasing a fast track for today's episode um, and doing it like that. But then I thought, no, that's not actually going to work very well. I, I don't really want to do that. So uh, we're not going to do that. Now, this one doesn't have a, um, a PTO on it and I believe ordinarily it would have leads going to the tractor but there are some versions of this that don't have anything going to a tractor. I know I have seen a video of one working behind a Land Rover. It was being towed around by a Land Rover and I thought that that I could actually do um, but at the same time it really did struggle. The Land Rover that was pulling it was really genuinely struggling to pull the thing along and it wasn't working very well. So in the end, I decided against it and thought that I would just stick with one of the tractors that we already own and uh, we'll, we'll just sort of do it like that. Um, so we want to come up through here and now with our version of the game um, or with this game, 
Um, you don't have to get these lined up perfectly in order to get the bales to go onto the bale loader. All you've got to do is just get into the vicinity of them. Um, the I did seriously see if, if you don't like um, line it up perfectly, it doesn't really matter. But the bale physics are such that they don't move quite the way they should when you're picking them up with something like this anyway. Remember that Ballon Boy thing that I used in um, Goldcrest Valley? I just tried it out. I did seriously consider using that one for this um, episode. If I show you very quickly, for those of you who got no idea what I'm talking about with Ballon Boy. Ballon Boy? What are you talking about, Ballon Boy? That, 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 that makes no sense. That one right there. You open up the front and it sort of um, goes off to the side and you've got to get the bales absolutely perfectly lined up for them to slide right into the back and then you can pick them up. Um, that one you did have to get them lined up perfectly and it was really frustrating for me to use because I'm so familiar with how bale physics should be and how they should operate. Um, they don't quite operate as they should with something like the Ballon Boy and so you end up with the bales sort of doing very peculiar things which I didn't like that was one aspect of it that I really it really frustrated me um more than it should have done I suppose but still um so that's why I decided not to use that one because I didn't really want to be um shouting at the camera because the bales weren't stacking correctly now can we put these bales into any of these sheds we're gonna well if we first of all we lift up the the machine so that we can see what height we've got so we've got the sheep over here and while that one just lifts up a minute i want to run over and we'll take a look at the sheep um it's this point right here is the buy point for the sheep so if we take a look here at the moment they're 4760 normally they're 4000 so sheep are very expensive at this time of year but i think that cows are actually quite a bit cheaper um I'm sure it's the beginning or the middle of summer that cows are at their cheapest. Um, because I've played almost an entire... Oh, that, it's going to be too high to stack the bales away in the shed. That's a bit of a nuisance. Um, looks like we might have to manually move them back into the shed after all. I was hoping to avoid doing that. Um, can we put them up through the middle? Can we just make one line of bales up through the middle? Is it going to fit? Oh. Oh, so close. So close. I was... Uh, just one line. If, if we could just have one line of bales up through the middle of the shed. And... I know that whizzing... Uh, sort of spinning the camera around and round and round is not overly realistic at all. Um, no, that's definitely not going to fit, is it? So close to fitting, that is. It, re it really is. It's, it's so not... It's, it's really not very far away at all. And this one here, that's not going to happen either. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to stack these bales in the yard. And then I'm going to have to come over with the JCB before it rains. Because you can leave them out until it rains. And then once it rains, then you're in trouble. So we're going to leave them here in the yard until it rains. Um, well, we'll have to bring the JCB over and just um, put them into the shed. But we've got that grab that will pick up three bales at a time. So we can do the job pretty quickly. Um... So we'll let these be put away. So then we've got some hay here for the sheep. And we'll have some hay back at the main yard for the cows. And yeah, it's either now or very soon that cows become cheaper to buy. And that's something that pleases me immensely. I would like to get more cows because milk in seasons seems to be by far the most profitable enterprise that you can do. I mean, crops are really good as well, but you just got to sell them at the right time of year. Um, so we will look at doing that, um, selling some crops soon, but um, not quite yet. There, it's in the winter that you need to sell them. I mean, that's it's, basically you're looking at real life prices. Um, and for most crops, selling in the middle of winter is when you will get most of your money for them. Um, but most farmers have got to weigh up the cost difference between saving the grain until winter and storing it so it does cost money to store you've got to have shed space and so on in order to be able to store it plus you've got to have a dryer on site to be able to dry the grain because if you um don't have if the grain is damp when you store it um it doesn't matter i'm getting a bit more lag there. I, I do very occasionally i get lag spikes on this map and i'm not quite sure why um i'm sure it'll be okay but anyway um 
yeah, you get um, sort of periodic, um, not periodic. You get um, the grain is very it's very rare in Europe that you can harvest grain that is dry enough to go straight into storage. You've got to run it through a dryer first, and running a dryer is expensive. So farmers have to weigh up the cost of building and paying for a dryer and then running the dryer as well that's all it's all very expensive stuff um as well as um having all the shed space to store all their grain until winter when the prices are at their best in order to sell the grain or do they just sell it in the summer as soon as they harvest it um some farmers belong to co-ops where they've sort of all joined together and there's like a, a massive great big communal storage area where they all store their grains um, and that can work really well it doesn't always work though it's um, it's kind of down to the individual farmer and every farmer does it differently um, the the communal things um, so a load of farmers all working together to share the the grain storage and the dryer and stuff that can work um, you all got to sort of you've got to pay into it um, but at the same time um, because all your grains are going in together it, you kind of got more buying power but at the same time you can uh, limit your market a little bit because obviously you've got um, bigger uh, bigger quantities of grain that have got to be sold um, so it's like different contract you've got to store it for longer because you know people are not people they go and buy 300 tons of grain from a farmer but when you've got 3,000 tons of grain to buy um, you're not going to take it all at once you're going to want it sort of spread out over a, a period of time and so I mean I guess as the, the whole supply and demand thing it can it can work some farmers find that working in a co-op like that is really really good it's really beneficial to everybody involved um, others have had bad experiences from it and would never do it again I know I know farmers from both sides of the story, so um, it's, it's sort of yeah, one six of one and half a do six of one and half a dozen of the other is is kind of the the like the, the final um, verdict on that. I've I've heard farmers from both sides of um, those particular co-ops, um, whether they're good or bad. Right, we'll just stick with the two loads here for the sheep because we're not even certain that we're going to get sheep this year. We can keep those bales in the shed there ready to bring back as and when we need them um, and in the meantime we'll run these back we'll pick up one more bale from our other fields and then we'll um, and there's our tractor disappearing I love the I really genuinely love the fact that the tractor disappears into the mud as it goes through it's absolutely fantastic it, it just pleases me so much that the tractor goes into the mud every time I, yeah, I, I don't know why. It's simple things. It's, it's, the, it's the simple things, really, isn't it? I'll run this one back to the main yard, um, grab another bale, and we can see about where we can stick these bales, because I'm not sure that we're going to be able to um, tip the thingy up straight into the shed. I think we're going to have to stack it back in there with the JCB telehandler, the same as we're going to have to do back at the sheep. Okay, I really don't think that the bales are going to fit in that shed. Um... Looking at the size of this one, compared to the size of that little shed there. That shed's not actually very big, and I'm quite concerned that we're not going to fit anywhere near enough food in this shed for winter, because we're going to have to get plenty of straw back here, as well as all of the hay that we're going to need. So I think what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be buying hay through the winter in order to feed our cows. And... I'm actually thinking that's going to be okay. I think that we will end up whole cropping some... Uh, or we'll do the maize silage in order to have silage for the cows. So they'll have a clamp full of silage. So that will be okay. We can do another hay harvest um, for the grass so that we've got plenty of hay. There's, yeah, there's no way that's going to fit in there. Those bales will only fit three high in that shed anyway. Um, so we we'll be able to make we, we'll be able to get most of the food that we need but we can buy um bales from the shop we can buy in feed and i think that that is absolutely fine buying in feed i've personally got no problems with buying in a load of feed for our cows for the winter um i think that could work quite nicely um it sort of gives us more scope for expanding the cow herd a bit more rapidly 
Um, oh, that was something that we were supposed to look at. We'll do that in a sec. As soon as we get our next load of bales, we will um, check how much the cows are buying... Uh, how much cows cost at the moment, how much we can buy more cows for. Because we got 23,500 euros, and I'm pretty sure we don't actually have any loan at the moment. So what we could do is we could expand our cows quite rapidly now soon. Um, and what did I want to look at? I, oh, it's escape. Um, we go back here. We've got no loan whatsoever, and loan is taken with the Seasons mod based on a percentage. I don't know what the percentage is, but it's a percentage of the total value of everything that you've got. So we do have the potential. We've got four bales over there. We'll go and grab those. Um, we do have the potential to get a load more money, and then we could use that for cows. Um, I was kind of thinking of... I was actually seriously considering putting that as my weekly question for this week, but I thought it might actually take too long because um, once we've gathered in the hay here, um, we're going to go and get some fresh grass. That's going to be kind of our thing that we're doing tomorrow, is we're going to go over to the forest area to get some fresh grass because I'd like to... Several people, when I suggested it, thought that would be a really cool idea that we could go over to the forest um, in order to acquire our zero grazing for our cows. Um, so we can do that, um, but then what do we do? So I was actually thinking that between tomorrow's episode and the next episode, I will have um, sort of gone through most of the summer um, because there's not a lot else to see. We're just waiting for grass to grow. We're going to be feeding cows, doing stuff like that. I can do that um, in between um, Tuesday and Wednesday's episode. At least I'm hoping. I'm, I'm, I'm planning my week so that I should have enough time to go and do all of that. Um, which means that we can then come back on, uh, Wednesday and we'll be approaching our harvest. I think we're going to end up doing some more mowing first, um, but I'm not quite sure about that. So, um, I, I haven't quite decided. Right, at the moment cows are 4,300 euros. So that is actually quite a reduction at the moment. I think actually... Um, in the next stage of summer, so uh, we're on 12 days per um, season. We will change that in the winter, I think. I'm actually planning to change up down to 9 days rather than 12, because I think that 12 is too much. Um, I was a little bit premature asking that question when I did. Um, we None of us knew enough about how seasons worked to make an informed decision on that one, so I, I'll change that. But I've been advised that the best time to do that is in winter. Um, Preferably when you've got no crops growing as well, or when, when nothing's growing. But, I mean, we growth stages and everything are, like, put on hold through the winter, so it shouldn't make any difference. So the only change it'll be, I'll do it on the first day of winter. I will then change it to um, nine days per season instead of the uh, 12 that we've got at the moment. And I think that should work out quite nicely. If so, I'm sort of thinking that on... Um, our next episode. I'll go towards the end of um, the the middle of summer. Um, so at the moment we're in early summer. It's saying early summer. And uh, on the fourth day of summer, so on the Tuesday there on the um, the thing, it's, it says it's due to rain then. Um, that'll be the last day of early summer and then it will transition to midsummer. And I think that midsummer is when cows are at their cheapest. So we will, if we can, buy some more cows in midsummer. Um, I will go back and look at my old uh, videos for Dowland Farm because I'm running seasons on there. I'm, I realise it's, it's kind of cheating a little bit, but I think that most of you will be okay with me, um, you know, sort of be able to look past this bit. Um, I'd like to get cows ready for winter, and cows are more expensive in winter because they give, um, you get a much better price for milk and they give more milk in the winter. I've noticed that the income I get on Dowland Farm from my milk in the winter is significantly higher than what I was getting in the summer. So the summer is the time to buy them up. Um, and I reckon partly it's because in midsummer you already it's already getting a little bit late to plan properly what you're going to do to be able to like store stuff for your cows. Um, and I think that's sort of part of the reason. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see how it works out. But I am hoping that we can get a load more cows if we get more loan. Um, I mean, I'd like to have some of the, those bales are just going to fall right over, aren't they? 
Or are they? Oh, no, they're staying, they're staying, they're staying. <laughs> okay, we are almost out of time. That was my timer just going off then. Um, yeah, so tomorrow we're going to take that New Holland and um, we're going to hitch on these two over here, the front-mounted mower and the really old, old forage wagon. And we're going to run those over to the forest in order to get some grass for the cows. And we'll just make sure the cows are topped up. They've got everything they need so that they're happy girlies. And then in our following episode, we're going to buy more cows. And I will just double check that it is midsummer rather than early summer that we want to be buying these cows. And then buy them we will. And I'm thinking that we will go for at least another 50 cows. Um, which is a large chunk of money. It does cost an awful lot of money to buy cows. Um, even if they get, at the moment, what were they? Were they 4,000? 1,700 was it? 4,300? I can't remember. We'll go and take another look in a sec. Um, and yeah, so even though they're cheap at the moment, they, I'm hoping that they'll be a little bit cheaper still um, and we'll end up, yeah, that is it. That is all of the bales. Okay, so we haven't had very many. We had two loads over there. We've had three loads plus four bales over here. Um, eight each, so that's uh, 44 bales. 44 bales of hay is not a great deal of hay, really. Um, I thought we had more than that. Didn't we have more than that? Maybe not. Um, we've got uh, silage. I was sure we had more than this. No, nope, we don't. We've got three loads here, um, plus two loads back over there, and um, each load is eight, so it's five times eight is 40. Um, just back up a little bit and start tipping it out so 44 bales um which means how many bales have we done in total on the map i thought that we'd done more than that nope we haven't created bales 51 so yeah it was 44 bales um just back that up now i gotta put those bales into the shed i probably won't do that before tomorrow's episode that is going to take a little bit too long um I can do that um, while I am jumping forward in time to the middle of summer. So, yeah, I'd love to hear your views and opinions on my plans to expand the cow herd. And let's just nip over and get to here. So, yeah, oh, 4,300. So at the moment, I mean, they're 700 euros cheaper than they are normally. The standard game, they're 5,000 euros each. Um... I've had a lot of people saying that I should get the um, the cheaper prices um, so that I get less money, uh, don't have to pay so much money for them. I like the way that they're balanced. I know that cows are ridiculously expensive, and so are the other animals as well. I mean, 5,000 euros for a cow, 4,000 euros for a sheep. That's a huge, huge amount of money. However, you do get a nice bit of money from the milk, and you've got to remember, um, it, it does balance itself out quite nicely. I think that it it does work well in the end. Um, you, you can't just take a look at one price and say, oh, it's not going to work. I do know that the pigs don't work. Someone did a very, very detailed um, look at the pigs and um, how profitable they might or might not be, and that you, do, you end up running them at loss, which is a bit of a shame because I did hope to do pigs on this map, but if it's, that's okay. If we can't do pigs, we can't do pigs. We will um, look at doing some sheep instead. Um, I believe the guys um, from Realismus... Is it Realismus Modding? Yes, I think it is. I believe they are um, planning to look at the pigs and do an update. I haven't actually um, seen... Uh, looked at any of their forum posts or anything in this last week. I've been rather busy with other things. Um, so I haven't had time to be um, perusing the forums like I normally do. So I am a little, little, little tiny bit behind on what's been going on and sort of future announcements and stuff um the realismus guys they did uh, release a mod it's a no teleport mod you cannot teleport anywhere on the map the only thing that you can do is you can reset the um uh, machines you can if you get like a tractor stuck or something like that you can reset it if you want to and there was talk of perhaps it being 
um, someone else was uh, looking at maybe doing a slight add-on to that so that you would have to pay to have your machine recovered but there's literally no teleporting you cannot when you install the mod and you look through you don't have any option here to enter the machine you can't tab through machines you can't jump to and visit a place you have to physically walk or drive there every single time and for realistic purposes, for realism, I think it's quite good. I quite like that idea. So I'm just going to return that one. A couple other things I would like your opinions on today. Um, I've got in my um, uh, Texas series, on the Texas map there, I've got a mod that sets the weights of the trailers and everything to completely unrealistic values um but the guy that made it modelica um he's the main mod that he's got on his mod hoster page i got the link to in the texas series is um all about making the trailers as realistic as possible they're considerably heavier than they are in the game so if you've got eight ton uh, if you've got eight thousand liters in your trailer you will know about it and your tractor will struggle to pull it so I'd like your opinions. I'm not putting it as a weekly question. I just want your opinions on whether or not you think I should be using that mod in this um, series and if you think I should be using the no teleport mod in this series as well. My argument against using the no teleport mod in this series is that part of this series is a management thing. Now originally we did start off with this one sort of being um, all about the big machinery and it's like this end of this, the week, the, the whole series. Um, it was about big machinery and big management type thing and we have kind of, I admit that we have got sidetracked um, with small gear but the whole idea was that we were managing the farm so being able to flick through all of our machinery and um, look at different things so I can just quickly flick over here to the sheep and we can have a look, we've got the Zeta parked in the shed there I've got this little Fiat here and I'm just going to put this one in the shed we've got all of our hay making machinery lined up there uh, well, some of it. We've got the hay bob. We've got the turner. Um, i got loads of stuff down here at the small farm down here where our sheep are going to be. Um, but yeah, that's kind of part of the charm of the series for me is the fact that we can flick through and take a look at everything as and when we need to. Um, where's wool? Oh, wool is left in here. Now, people did say that there was an issue with wool with the sheep. It wasn't spawning correctly when you um, had it. But I believe that the last fix for the game, because we're running the updated version, um, I believe that fixed that issue, so we no longer have to worry about it. Right, while I start stacking some of these away in the shed, I'm going to get rid of this bale squeeze on here, and I'm going to take that um, big grab over there. That's the one that we want. Um, so if I close this one up, just going to drop it down here now the big problem that i have with these is that it's very difficult sometimes to hitch and unhitch um they don't always do what they're supposed to do right my weekly question for this week i've i really have run out of time now um my weekly question for this week is which tractor do you want me to get and again it's a tractor question and i decided that we do need a tractor on this farm that's got a bit of grunt especially as we're going to be expanding our cows quite considerably i figured that a, um, a bigger tractor would also help things along quite nicely so do you want the ford tw it's not going to be the 25 it's going to be the tw 35 which is 190 horsepower um and probably i'll get the mud guards as well just because um so yeah the ford tw um the uh, go right back through here and the ursus 18014 again it's around 190 horsepower um for the ursus there i think it is 180 but it's close enough they're all around about the same horsepower i've deliberately kept them all around about the same so you've got the ursus there which is around 190 horsepower that's the the polish model there um, or Polish make uh, Ursus is Polish, isn't it? I have got that right. Uh, at least I hope I have, because um, a lot of people have been asking for Polish machinery. Um, so I'm hoping that the Ursus is actually the Polish one. Um, we've got the JCB Fast Track 3000. This is a nice speedy tractor. A lot of people have been asking for a fast track in a series somewhere. Again, it's around 190 horsepower. And finally, we have got the Fent 700 Vario. I'll upgrade the engine, and that one will be around 700 horsepower as well. Uh, 700? No, 190. Um, so I've got five, uh, four powerful tractors. They're all um, around about the same kind of power. Uh, three of them are brand new. One of them is an old classic. Um, but ultimately, it is your vote. It's your game. You decide. 
head into the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner now then how does one go about hitching these up because so far i've encountered nothing but issues with trying to hitch these up so i've i just tried to hitch it up then and if i go forward now that one's in the way still in the way right i do the hitching thing on there and then i jump back in and ah so you've got to get out, you've got to hitch it, and then you've got to get back in, and you've got to hitch it again. And then it should just work. Right. Um, this one works a little bit differently. You've got to have operating position like that. Oh, and then you is it enable automatic loading or not? Um... Right, well, that just moves that in and out. Uh, and then I can do the standard controls for that, but I don't think there is actually any way that you can manually open and close it. You've literally, you've got to do automatic loading or non-automatic loading. Um, just transport position, and yeah. So th there isn't actually any way of manually using this machine. So you do have to do it like this, which means that I can only take two bales at a time, which is a little bit of a nuisance. I was hoping to use this one as a sort of manual operation so that I could manually load and unload the bales. But still, we can we can do it like this, and then I just... What do I press to unload? Uh, oh, unload bales here is Z. I got that wrong. Right. So I can just keep doing this. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.